Hi, see you all again in our next asynchronous lecture for pneumatic. So today we will see the circuit uh, construction okay, for pneumatic system. Okay, for pneumatic system we have uh, five elements. So we have supply elements, we have input elements, processing elements, control element and also power element. So when you combine all these, so you will get a complete pneumatic system. Okay, so we will start our lecture today with the direct control of double acting cylinder. Okay, so the double acting cylinder you can control directly using the respective valve. Okay, uh, normally for double acting cylinder we use 5 over 2 directional control valve okay, instead of 3 over 2. 3 over 2 we will use for single acting cylinder. Okay, so you can see here, so we have a cylinder, then you have a 5 over 2 valve. So whenever the valve is connected directly to the cylinder, so that is meaning uh, is a direct control. So you have a push button, you press the push button, the valve will be activated and the cylinder will be extended or retract. So it has a direct control. Okay, so we will see a few examples today. Okay, so uh, you can read here a double acting cylinder is to extend when a push button is operated. Upon release of the push button, the cylinder is retract. The cylinder is of small 25 millimeter diameter requiring a small uh, flow rate to operate the control speed, correct speed. Okay, so you can see you have a cylinder, one, only one cylinder. So it will extend and do work for you. So we can see how the circuit can be con constructed using direct control. Um, okay. So, so what is this part? Okay. So this part is by default. So this is from your compressor, and this is like an emergency button. So when you construct your pneumatic circuit, you draw this by default. Okay. So z uh, zero z. So this is from your compressor. This is like an emergency button. So it will be on always on. So if your system is uh, not in a correct term, so it will be. Uh, you can just press the other way to uh, out your uh, old system. Okay. So then you have your five over two uh, valve here with uh, attach with the push button. So initially it is in the Retracted position, the cylinder in a retracted position, so your valve is not actuated. Okay, once you press the push button, okay, so your valve will change state and your cylinder will start to extend. Okay, so this is a construction with 5 over 2 valve. So, similar uh, way you can do with 4 over 2. So, you can see it only has 4 ports and 2 positions. So similarly, it, it will do the similar work for you. Okay. Okay. Indirect control of double acting cylinder. Okay. So previously we have seen uh, direct control. Now we will see indirect control of double acting cylinder. So meaning uh, between your push button and your actuator, uh, there will be another component. Another component. So that is uh, what we mean by indirect. Okay, a uh, we can read here example 4.4. A double acting cylinder is to advance when a push button is operated. So upon release of the push button, the cylinder is to retract. Okay, the cylinder is 250 millimeter diameter and consume a large volume of air. So you have a cylinder construction here. Uh, you can see the solution. Similarly, I give a solution using 5 over 2 valve and also 4 over 2 valve. So practically it does the same work. Okay, so I mentioned earlier. So this is by default. Then you have a push button 3 over 2 valve. Okay, 3 ports and 2 position valve connected to a push button and you have a spring return at the back. Okay, then this is connected. So once you press the push button, it will change state. It will give a pneumatic input to your valve to uh, switch state. 
from unactuated to actuated. Okay, once the input is entered, you it will your cylinder will start to extend. Okay, you start to extend. So once you release the push button, no input here. So automatically there's a uh, spring. So there's a spring that will change back to unactuated valve. So your cylinder will not have power, so it will start to reflect. Okay, so this is an indirect way of controlling a cylinder. Okay, so similar the, this with four O two. Okay, indirect control of double acting cylinder using memory valve. So what is memory valve? So you can read here. So double piloted valve. Okay, double piloted valve uh, is also called as memory valve. Okay, so if in your exam. So I mentioned about memory valve. You need to know that this is actually a double piloted valve. Okay, because now even if this push button mean forward is released, the final 502 control valve remain in the actuator status as the both the pilot ports of 502 valve are exposed to atmosphere pressure and the piston remain in the forwarded hand position. Okay. So we will see the circuit. I will explain from the circuit. Okay, so you have we see the forward motion first, the signal from the valve forward. Okay, so you can see this is an indirect way because you have a 3 over 2 valve here and 5 over 2 valve here. Okay, so that in between your cylinder and also your push button, there's a valve. So indirectly you're controlling. Okay, if you want to the cylinder to extend so you need to press this uh, push button okay so once you press this push button so you your 3 over 2 valve will give signal to 5 over 2 valve and this will switch position for it to extend okay so extend once it extends even though you this push button is released it still will your cylinder still will be in an actuated position okay until you press the return push button okay so that's why we call this kind of setup as memory valve so memory valve meaning you you are giving two pneumatic input to your 5 over 2 valve okay so so whenever the 5 over 2 valve has two pneumatic inputs from port 12 and also port 14 so that means it's a memory valve okay so you can see here once you press the return push button your your cylinder will start to retract okay. we will see some example for example 4.5 a city park city center car park as a barrier system to prevent people parking illegally the car park attendant check all the cars entering and leaving the car park. The barrier is raised and lowered by the double acting cylinder. The attendant pushes a button to operate the system. The attendant has complained that the barrier rises too quickly and is worried that it may damage it. Suggests a circuit to solve the problem. Okay, so this is a similar question that will appear in your exam. Okay, so in your exam, so you'll be asked a similar question like this. So you need to suggest circuit to solve some problem uh, because this subject is about uh, developing or designing a circuit to solving a problem. So here you have a barrier system for car parking. So you, uh, the question says that the attendant has complained that the barrier is rising too quickly. So meaning is that the cylinder is extending too quickly. So uh, you need to suggest a circuit to reduce the speed. Okay, so we can read here. Okay, so you need to put a restrictor, a restrictor, okay, to the cylinder to control the speed. Okay, so you can see some solution here, uh, but I don't encourage you to draw this in a vertical way. So better to be in a flat way, like how in the previous circuit, because it will be a bit confusing for you. Okay, so I don't encourage this. 
okay so you can read here the solution the restrictor is placed so that it slows down the exhaust air coming from the cylinder so meaning you have a restricted restrictor at the exhaust uh, port okay when a valve a is pressed okay valve a is pressed so it, uh, your 5 over 2 valve switch position uh, and your cylinder will start to extend and the air inside here will start to release slowly so your cylinder will start to extend slowly so it solves the problem okay so you can read uh, okay so it is make the piston outstroke slowly okay what it means by uh, outstroke we have here outstroke so what it means by outstroke outstroke mean extend in stroke mean retract so that's another uh, word to uh, that can be used in your exam you yeah, always restrict the exhaust air coming from the cylinder as this make the piston move much more smoothly okay normally in the system in the industry so you will have a restrictor uh, so when you have a restrictor your cylinder movement will be smooth okay so we move to another example example 4.6 okay one way flow control valve okay so look you have a situation here so let, let us read okay liquid metal is drawn from a smelting room cable by a casting lateral and molds the rising and lowering of the lateral is controlled by separate manual general the rising and lowering speed is separately adjustable so design a pneumatic control circuit for its application. Okay, so normally in the exam, exam or test, they will give uh, some sort like a situation where you need to come up with a solution. So you here you have a smelting uh, casting ladle. Okay, you have a ladle uh, to do a mold casting. Okay, so you need to reduce the speed. Okay, so you need to take the material here and it will change to this part. Okay, so the movement of ladle is controlled by your uh, piston. Okay, so we will see the solution. So they say that it must be controlled, uh, the speed must be controlled separately. So you need to have a restrictor here, uh, adjustable restrictor. And you have must use, so this symbol is a, adjustable cylinder so which you can find in your fluid scene okay so you have a two push button a two push button uh, so once you push the button so it will give a respective input so this is a memory valve because it has two pneumatic input okay when you press this this side will be activated when you press this your right hand side will be activated Okay, so if you want the cylinder to extend, so you uh, press the, the left push button and then the cylinder will be extended at the speed of 23 percentage of, of the, uh, it means that this restrictor only allowing 23 percent of the actual uh, compressed air. Okay, so let's say uh, it is a uh, it is a 10 bar supply it only will allow 2.3 percent okay or 2.3 bars of uh, pressure to enter so that means the extension will be a bit slow and retraction is controlled by this okay sorry so it will be opposite okay it will be opposite so when uh, it extends uh, it will be 50 percent and when it retract, it, it is 23%. You always see uh, where the remaining air will move. Okay, from when it extend, the remaining air will be pushed through this uh, part. So extension speed is 50% and retraction speed is 23%. Okay, so we move to another example, example 4.7. So this is on a end valve okay the piston rod of a cylinder 1a is to advance only if the workpiece is inserted 
in a workpiece retainer the gap has been lowered and the operating press, operator presses the push button valve upon the release push button or if the guard is no longer in its lower position cylinder 1a is to retract to the initial position okay so we can see here so it has uh, three types of um, condition okay the first condition cylinder only extend when the workpiece is inserted in the work retainer meaning this part okay then you have a guard guard has been lowered okay, meaning this uh this part is lower and push button is pressed the operator manually push the button so this is to uh, extend okay then to release meaning for the cylinder to retract so you need to release the push button or the guard here must be open so meaning you need to have a sensor to know the position of the guard and also you must have a sensor here to check whether the workpiece is uh, there okay for it to extend uh, you need to check the seat okay so this is the solution okay so you can see here uh, first so you just draw this okay this is by default uh, then uh, so if this is connected to the same line pneumatic line okay and the cylinder will be in the retracted position so cylinder 1a so this is unactuated okay and if uh, the valve is connected one one side is connected to pneumatic input and one more by uh, spring return so meaning by when it's unactuated it will return back to the original position okay so initially we have seen there's a three input the okay, one is first is from the push button okay second is from the guard so whether the guard is down so if the guard is down so switch one s2 is uh, active so you can see the uh, uh, surface your roller roller is connected to a circuit that means there is a connection this is on so if the surface is no more there so meaning the circuit is the roller valve is not actuated okay so this is the first condition push button and also uh, roller is connected to a and and gate so meaning both input must present to f a input to 1v2 okay so two n valve are used then you have one s3 the one s3 is from your work workpiece okay. okay so it is from your workpiece okay so if uh, three all three are activated so meaning this one v2 will pass the input input to the valve 5 over 2 valve for the cylinder to extend okay so if let's say one one of the inputs are missing okay uh, so it will retract it will start to retract because this is a angle so this is how you can develop a circuit to to solve your problems so using angle okay so now we will see example 4.8 how to use a uh, or valve to solve your problem okay we you can see a double acting cylinder is used to transfer parts from a magazine so this is a magazine uh, if either a push button or foot pedal is operated if we have uh, two input one is push button one more is foot pedal okay the cylinder is to add one so we have a cylinder here so the cylinder will push the boxes down Okay, once the cylinder is fully extended advanced okay advanced me extended fully extended it is to retract to its uh, initial position so it means the cylinder has a maximum length 
once it reached the maximum length, so you must have a sensor to check whether it's already reached the maximum length, then it will start to record. Okay, a 3 over 2 way roller valve uh, is to be used to detect the full extension of the cylinder. Okay, so you have a roller valve at the end of your cylinder to check whether full extension is achieved. You will see the circuit. Okay, so you can see. So this is the roller valve. Okay, the roller valve one S three is here. Okay, so actually this is position at the end of the cylinder to check the full extension. Okay, so we will see the circuit. Okay, so this is by default, and then you know that it's a over all valve, and you have uh, two input. One is from the push button. Push button is one S one. And you have a foot pedal. Okay, this is a symbol for foot pedal, and uh, both are uh, connected, written by spring. Okay, then you have a or valve. So meaning either one input is there, it will send a signal to valve for extension. So once the valve one v two achieve uh, input signal, so it will switch state. So this is a memory valve because it has two input, okay, one from the OR gate and one more from the roller. Okay, so from here, so if you receive an input in port 14, so it will, your 5 over 2 valve will switch position and your cylinder will extend. It will extend until it reach 1S3. Once it reach 1S3, so the ro roller valve you will you you will have a surface here meaning it's connected okay so the roller valve is pressed so then it will send signal in port 12 uh, to for, for the cylinder to retract okay so uh, okay the example 4.9 the combined actuation of a manually actuated valve and a roller lever valve advances the framing tool on a edge folding device. Okay, the forming tool is driven by a double acting cylinder. For rapid forward travel, the circuit utilizes a quick uh, exhaust valve. The retracting speed is to be adjustable. If either either of the two valves are released, the tool written to its uh, initial position. Here you have a situation here, so you will see the circuit. If this is by default okay then you have a end valve meaning both input must be there so initially so one s2 the roller valve so roller valve is the ex extension or uh, retraction valve okay, is uh, not written here okay it's uh, always on okay meaning you give a input so your end valve will have uh, both input and your 5 over 2 valve will be actuated and your cylinder will retract. Cylinder will retract, uh, then, then your 1S2 is the release automatically when it's a uh, one. So 1S2 is a retractor a detector. So this will be uh, no input in port 14. So your valve will be written back to initial position okay uh, or the unactuated position by the spring and this input will be given passing to a quick exhaust valve meaning your cylinder will return back quickly okay so this is for this example okay so you will see various method of checking and position of a cylinder so initially we have seen so, so we put a roller valve or a kind of sensor at the end of uh, your cylinder to check whether your cylinder uh, have uh, uh, reached the maximum extension length. Okay, so we have uh, two condition. One is to check whether it's, uh, it reached the retraction position or the fully extended position. So based on that, we will uh, see what we can do with the circuit. Okay. So normally, mechanically, we, we, we have a few methods, okay. Uh, before I go to the types of method, so we have a few methods uh, to check the end position of the system. 
First is uh, the commonly used uh, mechanical way. So you, you use a ruler type or idle return ruler type. Okay, and you have a read sensor. This is for your electro-pneumatic and electrically proximity switches. This is also for uh, electro-pneumatic. Then you have a pneumatic signal generators. Okay, this is for uh, advanced circuit. Okay, so we will see roller levers limit switch. This is the most common one. Okay, so uh, how it operate? Okay, you have a roller here. Okay, so you have a roller here. Okay, when it receive a force. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this switch and this roller will be pushed downwards. Okay, when it move downwards. It will hit this uh, switch and your valve will be activated. Okay, so this is a very direct way of uh, checking. Okay, checking whether your cylinder reached the maximum level or minimum level. Okay, then we have another type. Okay, you have a roller lever limit switch with idle return. Okay, so this is specially used to eliminate uh, certain signal so meaning overlapping signal so meaning just now we have uh, port 12 and port 40 in uh, memory valve so if uh, both are uh, given uh, input at the same time it is considered as a signal overlapping and your valve don't know which one to choose so this condition can happen in pneumatic system so in order to avoid that so you have a signal elimination way, okay, or we call it as a signal overlap uh, elimination, okay. So using this uh, roller lever limit switch with idle return. So this is similar like um, your uh, roller valve, but it only allowing uh, input input from one direction. If so meaning if the cylinder is ex uh, extending and coming from this way uh, it will not activate it because your roller will move backward it will move like this uh, but if in, it comes from the opposite way so the switch will be pressed so this is considered like a one only one direction uh, one direction activity activation so it will eliminate your signal signal overlap okay so you can okay you can see here the use of limit switch so you have two limit switch here okay so this is for the normal limit switch okay so meaning what s1 is to check whether uh, your cylinder is at the retracted position and S2 is used to check whether it already reached the maximum extension. Okay, based on this, you can manipulate your, you can play around with your circuit. Okay, so we move to the next example, example 4.1 attempt. Okay, pressure sequence valve. Okay, a double acting cylinder is used to press together glued component. The estimated Okay, estimated uh, pressure is around 4 bar. So you have uh, estimated pressure. So normally in the system, you only you have an operating pressure range. Okay, so for this case, so you have a 4 bar. Okay, upon pressing a push button, the clamping cylinder is to extend and trip the roller valve. Okay, once the fully extended, position of the cylinder has been reached and sufficient clamping force has been developed the cylinder is to retract to the initial position okay so you, they ask you to develop a pneumatic circuit using pressure sequence valve okay so the, your, in your exam so if they can specifically ask you to use a particular setup so they can ask you to use a timer valve you can uh, ask you to use a uh, exhaust valve or O valve or N valve. Okay, so here they ask you to use a pressure sequence valve. 
Okay, so you can see uh, how the situation. Okay, so next to this is supposed to be one S three because this is one S three. This is one dot three. Okay, um, so this is not actuated because it's not extended yet. Okay, once this is fully extended, it will reach. 1s3 then it will switch position okay for initial push uh, initially how it will be so cylinder is extending because you are giving a push button input so the valve will be activated cylinder will extend and you have a return here okay so your pressure sequence valve will always check whether your, your pressure is below 4 bar or not okay so maximum is 4 bar so if you're above power bar, it will give a signal for you to retract. Okay. So once you reach 1S3, okay, so this switch will be on and it gives signal to the 3 over 2 valve for you to retract. And you have a uh, limiter here. So extension will be limited. The speed will be limited. Retraction will be a bit fast. Okay, so we move to the last part of the slide, example 4.11. So this is on the time delay valve. Okay, so your your circuit, uh, you can in your circuit you can introduce time delays. Okay, so time delays is normally uh, once the actuator maybe or cylinder is extended, you need to wait like five to six, six seconds, uh, then it will retract. So you can introduce time delay in your circuit. Uh, obviously, you need to use a time delay valve, and you we have seen in the previous slides how you can increase or decrease your time delay. Okay, so we see the situation here: a double acting cylinder is used to press together glue components. Upon op operation of a push button, the clamping cylinder extends slowly. Okay, once the fully advanced position is reached, the cylinder is to remain for the time t close to six seconds and then immediately retract to the initial position. The circuit retraction is to be adjustable. Okay, a new start cycle is only possible after the cylinder is fully retracted. Okay, meaning in this uh, circuit that you need to design, so you need to introduce a time delay of six seconds. Okay, only one time delay. Okay, after the uh, cylinder is fully extended. Okay, so you can see how the circuit is constructed. Okay, so you have uh, one push button. Okay, and you have a roller valve one S two. One S two is to check whether your cylinder is uh, retracted or not. So if it's uh, retracted, so it will be on. Then you push button. Uh, you press the push button. Your end valve will receive two input. So it will send signal to port fourteen. So your 5 over 2 valve will switch position and your cylinder will be extended. Okay, extended. Okay, once it extends, it will reach 1S3 at the maximum position and 1S3 will be activated. Okay, once it activates, it will enter a time delay valve. So this is time delay valve. If you are not sure, refer back to the previous videos. Okay, how the time delay valve will, will be. Okay, once the time delay of 6 seconds is achieved, it will send uh, in, input to your uh, right hand side of 5 over 2 valve for you to retract. Okay. So this is a simple application. Okay. Then you have uh, another types of time delay problem. Okay, you can see here plastic cylinders are to be bonded using a pneumatic cylinder. It is required that piston perform power stroke on actuator of the end push button. The return motion should take place after the piston reaches forward and position cylinder attain full pressure of 6 bar and remain in that position for 10 seconds. Okay, once it uh, extended, it uh, remain for 10 seconds and then uh, it will start to retract and your next cycle will only start after 20 seconds. So you will see the circuit. It has a two time delay. 
Okay, one is uh, after your cylinder fully extended, and one more after it fully uh, retract. Okay, so here the time delay it will be 10 seconds, here will be 20 seconds. You will see the circuit. Okay, you have a push button here. So S1, S1 is your retracted uh, roller valve. Okay, so this is connected, this is connected. Uh, okay, so we will see from here. Okay, we will see from here. So one S2, so meaning the cylinder is extending. The cylinder is extending. Okay, so it will enter to a pressure sequence valve to check whether the extension is uh, within the pressure. Uh, then it will enter a 10 second delay once it reached 1S2. Okay, it, it will wait for 10 seconds, then it will start to retract. Okay, once it retract, okay, this is a retraction part. Okay, then uh, once it retract, so it will activate switch S1, S1, then it will wait 20 seconds. 20 seconds before it is uh, the new cycle status. Okay, so I think that's all uh, from me for today. So we will have uh, some discussion questions. Uh, I personally encourage you to try all the circuit in your fluid scene for you to see the simulation. Simulation how it works. Okay, so this is how you can design, uh, design and also solving a pneumatic problem. Okay, so with that, so we'll see you again in next week. Thank you for listening.